everybody, I'm Yendi and this is Odyssey with Yendi on Told Journeys, where I speak with some of my favorite people and have some shape-shifting conversations. Here, they share their stories leaving nuggets of goodness and life lessons to motivate and inspire our own life's journeys. We've all come to know and love her, whether it be from the world of pageantry or the world of politics. Either way, this multi-layered, multifaceted woman is by all means one of my favorite conversations I've had. Lisa Hanna. Lisa. Yes. I <laughs> You're hands down one of the most layered people I know and it's so, you're exciting. You're exciting to me because there's just so much to you. You're so multifaceted and multidimensional that it's, I don't know, it's intriguing. You intrigue me a lot. I think you know that though. <laughs> <laughs> I said, trying um, to find out why, <laughs> but okay. You know, I promise you'll find out, right. but I'm so glad that we're having this chat. Thank you so much for sitting with me. You're welcome. Um, I want to start where it mm -hmm. all started. Wow. And it's pre Miss World. It's let's start at rapping. Mm -hmm. Let's start there because I feel like that was an area in your life where you were first presented to the world, to Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a, here I am, I'm a youngster, I'm exploring and navigating life, but let me just step in front of a camera. What was that experience? It actually like wasn't rapping though, it was enter the dojo. Oh, well, let's just go further. <laughs> <laughs> there was a program um, that JBC used to do called Enter the Dojo. Yeah. Where Errol Lynn had a number of us as young karatekas that would come on and teach you self-defense. And, yeah. and uh, it was funny because when I went back at school, I was known as a karate girl. So you? we said it was Enter the Dojo. So nobody never played with you? No, no, <laughs> no. That was there. That was so it was it was then and then rapping came shortly after, maybe third, fourth form, and it was a number of us that were doing it. But at that time Jamaica was very different. You didn't have a range of media houses and you didn't have social media. So the one T V station, people looked forward to local programming. Yeah. So you had young people that were interested in what was happening in society and we had one T V station at the time. So it was it was the only it was the only game in town. And then in a short space of time, Miss World happened. Yeah. Did you want to do pageantry? No, I didn't. Yeah. I, I was actually, I was a tomboy and I was walking in a plaza and Laurel Williams saw mm -hmm. me yeah. and said, you know, you should enter Miss Jamaica. And I looked at her like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but my mother used to make clothes and she sewed. So right. she would use me as a model and several other persons. So I was exposed to um, the world of fashion. Mm -hmm. So I would, at that time in Jamaica, you also had fashion shows. People used to pay money to go right. to fashion shows. Yeah. And you had the big designers who used to parade. So you had people knew models in Jamaica. Right. So you had, um, you had the Debbie Whittinghams, you had the Angela Neals, and especially at the time, models who went away and did well, Jamaicans were very, very interested in yeah. them. So fashion shows were a big deal. Bev Cork, Althea Leng. Mm -hmm. I remember when Althea busted onto the scene with Essence, I mean, it was just like, wow. It was it. So I think from that perspective, but no, the beauty contest thing was, was not me at all. How and uncomfortable were you in that space? I was very uncomfortable because yeah. I wasn't the I wasn't the person in high school that followed these things. Right. You know, there was there was always young women who did, right. and young women who in, did the fashion shows and the Pulse. At the time, I think the Pulse was it fashion model. Right. They were just coming out That's with that, right, and there yeah. were a number of people who were now interested in doing that. No, I wasn't. I was the prefect, head girl, student council, house captain. So you mean business captain. long time? <laughs> no, but I, I was a tomboy. Right. So I wasn't really, and I wasn't, wasn't considered. You know, I never did so the don't party even, scene. I was no, going to say. I, was, I didn't do the parties and, and the, the different things. So I don't think anybody really eventually thought I would have done it. And then I did it. And, you know, it was. It was fun, 
and it, we traveled Jamaica and uh, and even at that time Miss Jamaica was a, a really big, big deal. deal yeah for sure and um, between that time I think when winning in September by November I was Miss World so things changed drastically, drastically at Let's 18. Let's talk about that change mm -hmm. because one, it's already a space that you're not the most comfortable in. <laughs> Two, at 18, we think we know, but we really don't know nothing. We're just navigating. No, man, I knew. You knew? Yeah. I, I, for, so, for example, I remember we were, we were on our way to South Africa and um, we had to stop in London for a number of things. And I'll never forget it. The, there was a group in the hotel and they pulled the fire alarm yeah and it was in it was a reality check to see what women representing beauty at three o'clock in the morning running down Piccadilly Circus looked like <laughs> I, I'll say it like that the <laughs> only one who had her suitcase was dressed for the airport with her money her passport and her handbag and her carry-on was me you were ready. I listen. I born <laughs> so, ready. So, and I I remember looking around the room when they realized it was a false alarm and going, oh, so that's what Miss Columbia looks like at three o'clock in the morning. Oh, shady. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, I, and in a nice way. But it, it, course, but you yeah. realize <laughs> what went there into there are layers, to the there are layers yeah. and layers and layers. And yeah. I thought, what am I doing? <laughs> I don't fit. I don't fit this this thing. But then that's probably exactly why you fit it. That's probably exactly probably. why it was fitting for you to be Miss World because the representation was less of a. Let me be pretentious, and this is just. But really it was also I a different time of the world. Tell the me. world was was shifting right. at that time, as well. Where we were going to have the pageant, South Africa was changing politically. Apartheid. And mm. you also had the for the. You know the freedom of Nelson Mandela. They were right. now going into democratic elections. They were, the PLO and Israel were were looking at peace treaties with right. Clinton. So the world was looking, was was different. So here comes um, a radical Miss Jamaica. Here comes the first Miss Black South Africa. Right. Here comes Miss Lebanon and Miss Israel. And 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 mm. you know, at the time Lebanon was held for questioning when she got back because she was having conversations with Israel. It, it was a very, very different time. So I think the judges themselves having a situational awareness about what the world mm -hmm. was, right. was also looking for a difference in who could also carry a message. Right. And um, I guess, yeah. And it was, it, at that time, you didn't have all of the different... Many competitions. So you just heard who was in the top 10 and on the night. Was that was it. Right. And so if you didn't make that top 10, you exited stage left and <laughs> the top 10 stayed on the <laughs> stage. So, yeah. Well, no exits for you. Hey. Well. <laughs> Ended out on top. Um, that then shoots Lisa into not a Jamaican public life mm -hmm. but global public life. Correct. Um, yeah. What, how do you feel like it shaped you having to grow up under a microscope? Uh, well, I pretty much grew up, I mean from you were 13, I pretty much grew up in Jamaica with in, in front of TV. Right. So being on the world stage wasn't difficult. I, I, I've always had a very steady compass, right. internal compass. So nothing, I'm not flappable right. and I don't have principles of convenience. So it wasn't mm. as if it was going to change who I was. That is a word, principles right. of convenience. I like and that. so it was easy to ease into it. Right. And I think the Miss World organization recognized that you could drop me in, in the, anywhere in the world and I would have Adapted. prevailed mm -hmm. the circumstances I think when when women lose sight of who they are is when their ego subsumes everything else and I think that's that's where you have to gauge it because there's a lot of adoration mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. perks yeah. and you know false promises that right. are being thrown your way and you have to you have to be able to decipher right. what is real from what is what isn't. Right. And I was I was fortunate to be at that time because there was 
there was not a lot of disturbance in terms of noise. So right. even now with social media and everything is, is so dynamic and so quick. So we had a better, I think, option of being able to navigate the world at that time because you did it on your own time. Right. You didn't feel pressured right. that you had to hold. If you weren't, if you were 24 and you weren't declaring world peace, <laughs> You know, it was okay. You know, if you <laughs> yeah. if you were you now twenty five and you hadn't already had two degrees beneath your name and you had three TV shows or you didn't have this many followers, it was, it was okay. Mm. You know, and I liked it then. Well, it's funny because <laughs> I remember vividly we were on a flight together years ago. Actually, we didn't run her back, and Lisa did run her front, and Lisa said, "Come for me." She said, "Come and come sit beside me." <laughs> And I remember you saying to me about the element of mystery mm -hmm. and the need for there to be a bit of mystery. How is that for you now with this new social space, with the balance of sharing, mm -hmm. but still holding what is dear and sacred as just that? Mm -hmm. um, and still having a bit of mystery, but I needed to know <laughs> that I don't waste time and I like. No, no. Um, well, I'm five years away from 50. So Hold it's, it's, now. it's, I think oh. my, my, nice. God, you look I've, good. <laughs> I've, I've, I, <laughs> sorry, Let I have seen a lot, yeah. done a lot, um, raised a lot of children, including my own and seen them do well. So my patience level with myself mm. is, is intact. And when I say to women, you know, reserve a part of you that's that's that only you can touch don't let anyone else be able to touch it is simply that whether it's a part of your soul whether it's a part of your internal functioning but the minute you give everything away about who you are then you're not able to have that peace and understanding mm -hmm. with yourself mm. so you have to be able to nurture that and when you sit in your quiet space you can nurture it but it, it's that part of you that makes you glow and and you can tap into because if you don't then you you just become a part of the rat race and everybody can pull you in, in different parts of the direction I think when I say it to some women they think it's a I'm relating to a, a man and woman relationship. No. I'm not. No. It's not a man and woman mm -hmm. relationship. It's really an internal functioning. And you can build on it. But right. it's, it's, for, it's that part of you. My husband says it's, it's my secret. <laughs> but it's not a secret. It's just that mystery. You read a lot. I do. Um, what is it about reading? that feeds Lisa the way it does? Um, well, first of all, it exercises my brain. Yeah. And I think in a world, and it, it, it's disciplining. So in a world that is so visual, having the discipline to sit down with a book and be comfortable with it is just exercises my self-discipline. And also tolerate other opinions because I'm, I'm in a career where Everybody feels that I have the answer, and I don't. I don't necessarily have the answer to everything. I'm glad you touched on that because... Or I should have the answer. I feel like you've ventured into a space that has to be one of the most rewarding spaces to be in because you get to serve and see growth mm -hmm. and progress and change and development. But it is so unforgiving and it's such a double-edged sword or she's a double-edged machete because <coughs> <laughs> I know there is a lass in the vehicle yeah but I don't I don't leave my lass anywhere <laughs> by the way she's not lying there's legit <laughs> a lass in the vehicle <laughs> but it's a uh, no it's never enough it is never mm. enough your absolute best for someone is still not going to be enough mm. how do you still maintain the focus of what drives you? How do you still get up and want to mm. do it? Um, because it must be hard. I see it from the outside and it, I'm, I'm yeah. The Jamaicans are the most resilient people. Absolutely. But they are in many ways frustrated. So I come to the table and um, I've learned in my 13 years of representation 
listening and being accessible is sometimes the best right. approaches. Right. And it is persons like myself that perhaps because we are accessible and you have other social workers who are accessible, etc. It's the thin line between perhaps, and, and this might be the extreme perverse way of looking at it, between social anarchy right. and just somewhere to vent. Right. So that's perhaps why you don't have the kind of protests and, that uprising. you, and uprisings right. that you see like the Arab Spring and in other places in the world. Because as a small population, Jamaicans are able to, you know, whether real or perceived, but they can touch us. They can right. touch their leaders. Right. They can touch their pastor. Right. They can touch their social worker. They can touch somebody who can give them an some assurance. solace and some a, an ability to exhale. Yeah. But it's we need more resources. Right. You know, as a as a country, we need to grow the economy and grow people's per capita income so that they have and they can afford their cost of living and be aspirational in their in their desire for life. Everybody should be aspirational and want something better. That is not something that you just talk. I know you walk that walk, mm -hmm. the aspirational walk. Um, the projects that are being put in place to make your base an example. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I mean, that's like real goals happening, mm -hmm. you know. I know that you are big on the concept of us exporting. Yes. We have things to offer across borderlines. Mm -hmm. There is a miss conception between import substitution and an export driven policy and people sometimes misunderstand it because they said well you know we need to grow and feed ourselves but and that's important but feeding yourselves won't grow your economy that's right. only three million people right. you have to feed yourselves and feed the world so ask yourselves should we be importing what we can produce efficiently and also growing for the rest of the world what they need and and putting the, the country in that position and it's going to take, in the same way that you revitalized the tourism right. industry, you have to now go all in if you really want to do agriculture right and have the value added. And the problem with politics is that politics and the tribal nature of Jamaica's politics makes the listening of what I have to say by the other side, um, there's a dissonance and a disconnect. And what has to happen is if you want Jamaica to prevail you have to plan for the next 10, 20, 30 years and say to each other, look, these are the things that are non-negotiable. If we really want to do this properly. And it needs to cross party lines. Yeah. But uh, here is my thing. How hard is it to navigate those political lines? Because unfortunately, politics is just politics is politics. <laughs> but then... <laughs> nation and people first yeah. and foremost mm -hmm. and I know I can I can think of maybe three people off the top of my head who is in that space who I can be like yeah man no they're for people and nation yeah. um, first it's not about securing or locking down a seat well I think it's you, not about I think I don't need the power or the title or the yeah um, it certainly is not the best paying job right. in the world. But I'm Jamaican first, and I, I would like the Jamaican passport to be formidable and right. a premier passport so that people don't have to line up at the US Embassy. Amen. And that they don't have to line up to at the British Embassy when you right. present a Jamaican passport, but you have to do things to get there. Right. Of course. And we're too small as a country to have the kind of tribal politics that we have. And it's 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 both it's the basis of both, yeah. but it's also the uncommitted yet engaged voter Correct. that has to understand what it really means to have political will. So it's, it's, right. it's, it's one thing to say, well, we don't trust politicians or we don't like politicians or we're not going to vote. But what is your political will? What is, what's right. your passion? So if you, if you were to transfer political will to passion, what really is your passion? Do you want to see Jamaica grow? Don't, it, don't you want to see it? What is that segment of the population prepared to do to hold people like me accountable? accountable. The musicians try to do it and you know, the protégés, the chronics, the Kabaka pyramids, the Jesse Royals, the Lila Ikes, the Janines, etc. who are saying, look, you know, Bujo, saying, look, we are the vanguards and here's what we don't like. Bob Marley used to do it, Peter Tosh used to do it. But what are, 
what's your generation doing? You know, the PSOJ is one thing and the Manufacturers Association of Jamaica and the Exporters Association of Jamaica, but these are bodies. You guys have such a potent ability to hold leaders accountable if yeah. you fashioned yourself with passion. And, and now I more think, than ever. Right, and I think that is what I would like to see in, in Jamaica and not follow things blindly right. and not just follow cliches and not just follow, you know, things ad hoc right. topics, just, you know, that sound good. What was the thing that made you decide that you wanted to not just walk and live and be here on one side of the fence, mm -hmm. but you actually wanted to be a part of policy making. You wanted to be a part of legacy making. I didn't look at it that way. Okay. Um, and I, so when I sat down to look at really what I wanted to do in life, it was helping people. And, and my life has always, whether it was my mother with World Hunger Project or Jamal or some kind of volunteer work. So it was always about people. And this, I thought, was the best opportunity to be able to do it. And I, I liken it, it, it's funny how the electorate has shifted and in, in, in many ways different things have shifted. I was listening to an interview with Lizzo the other day and I really like her. <laughs> and she said, look, you know, after she won the Grammy and stuff, she said, look, I've been singing this kind of music forever. That's right. She's the world been was, in she's the been pieces. there, she yeah. said, but the world just wasn't listening. Right. And, but something snapped, you know, fat shaming became a, a bad thing. Women were more empowered about feeling better about their bodies. Right. Um, it was okay to be more natural. So the, the beauty industry also shifted. Right. And it's a, what, what you and others and what I'm witnessing is the same thing in terms of our electorate and the demands yes. and what's necessary. So the electorate is very, very different now in terms of what their demands and likes and yeah. needs are. But they say it and there is an expectation of entitlement, mm. which is bordered on an impatience. Right. So my son's generation is, look, mom, I really don't have the patience for to, this. For this. And yeah. they're brighter. Right. They're more intelligent. Much more exposed. Much more exposed. Worldly. They're, they, yeah. they get it. They're sharper. So, and they can argue things logically and rationally. So you can't spin things. Right. So the concept of, of the politician spinning is not one that's going to go down very well. The nope. best thing you can do is, is, is be authentic. As a matter of fact, that only puts a nail in your coffin in this yeah. day and age. In this day and age. Yeah. And they can, they can smell right through it. Absolutely. Right. So I think it's, it's, it's important that your generation holds us accountable. I don't know why you're separating us, you know, why you're separating because, us? <laughs> because, <laughs> because I tell people, if I tell people when I met you and your hair was out of here <laughs> and you were playing with your dollies and... That yeah. also changed. Um, it was pre-product, yeah. pre-black pre, yes. pre, pre yes, 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 girl yes. hair product. Yes. <laughs> but it was, she had all this hair. You couldn't even see Yendi. <laughs> you, you had all of this hair. Oh, we man. used to live around by Hope Pasture. That's right. I remember mm. you came to get to buy a, a dog. dog. You came to buy a dog. Mm. I remember that vividly. I was actually mm. bursting. I was exploding because you were the first time I ever in my life came in contact with someone I saw on TV and who I thought was the best thing since sliced bread and cook food and I was like she's in my backyard I'm gonna die you're very complex <laughs> you have no idea <laughs> very complex <laughs> not, but, not as much as but you as think much as you're complex you are I think you wear your heart on your sleeve I think you just are who you are and mm -hmm. you feel what you feel and what you see is what you get. I really yeah, feel that you way see with is what you. you get. Yeah. Um, it, it won't be. It won't be anything else. There will be. More, there are no surprises yeah. that you're gonna necessarily get from who I am. I think perhaps if you have never seen that brutally honest side of me, then you might want to just tell the truth from the get go. But <laughs> other than <laughs> other than that, I'm um, thing. But, and also, I, I will, um, 
I can defend myself. So I'm not afraid of walking into situations. And one of the things that I hope for Jamaican women, I, I've seen so much abuse of women in this country, psychological abuse, um, financial abuse of women, just talking to them. And one day I really, really hope that we can get to a point where women themselves have the courage and that will take the society as well, buttressing and putting systems in place to make some who are not necessarily as confident as others get to that realm mm. of feeling that they, their empowerment is, comes from inside them and there's, there's nobody else that's going to make you feel happy or empowered. The, the beauty about life is that when you feel empowered and you, you meet a, another person who enhances that value, then that's when it's beautiful. But right. you can't depend on somebody else for your, for your happiness because when that person goes, you're going to be unhappy. But in general, ex ex happiness cannot be an external mm. factor. It just can't. It's going to have to be something that can come from, from you. Um, how much of a big job do you think you have in raising a son in this space on the back um, of what you were saying about very women? Very big. Yeah. He's been, he's been pretty awesome though in, in terms of getting it and getting it coming from uh, perhaps a divorced home. But he's... I, my, both myself and his father have really worked to make sure that he's, he's solid and my husband No has really played a major role in Alex's life which I'm very very grateful for and they have a beautiful relationship but sons in this day and age as mothers you have to be honest with them talk to them about sex talk to them feelings. about feelings talk to them about sensitivity and it's yeah. okay to to do certain things and also talk to them about the responsibility of being a man because there is a responsibility that comes with being a man and Absolutely. the things that are important in in taking on those commitments when you decide to take them on and also not waste in your life there are no waste men around here no don't feel that you're going to come and, and not be productive and you can't and live under my roof can contribute and be undisciplined, <laughs> indisciplined um, and think that because you are okay and the space around you is okay, it doesn't belong to you. That's right. Go and figure it out and make it on your own and don't use me. Um, and he knows. He said, so look, if you get arrested, you're going to spend a night in jail. Because me not bail you. Same way, so. so <laughs> Find your own bail you're going money. To, you're, going to, you're, going to, you're going to, especially if, it, if, it, if you do something that is unwarranted. So he, I think mothers have to be really loving yeah. of their sons. Talk to them. Spend time with them. Understand what's going on up here because there's so much peer pressure. And it's not easy now because of just all the influences that are out there. And figure out what they want to do. I mean, I think Alex knew from he was young. He was doing the university, excuse me, experience. That's what he wanted to do. But there are so many different things now in the world and so many different careers that you can look into in terms of entertainment, yeah. art, culture, fitness, and don't limit them. And we live in a exploring. space now where it's, you don't have to be going a traditional route. No. Mm -mm. We really live in a space where people are much more free to express their life passions mm -hmm. and make careers out of passions mm -hmm. because the space has the space supported that. The space allows you to do it. Really it. And, and if, you, he wants to, if you, he wants to be an actor, I mean, analyze a space. So you have Netflix, you have iTunes, you have Hulu, you have Stars. And, Prime, you have all of these spaces that are also now in production. Yeah. So the, the, the chances perhaps of, of your child getting something in animation or acting or a production assistant or something like that versus getting a job as a partner at a, firm. At a law firm I mean, is, is actually probably higher on the entertainment right. side. Right. So don't, 
don't limit their options in terms of dreaming right. and, and pushing them in that area. And I, that's what I'd like to see happen in the Jamaican school system too. Yeah. You know, we need more performa performance arts high schools where persons can dance and Absolutely. draw and learn film and photography and rather than just the traditional roots which are for some people are boring they don't learn that way absolutely so uh, you know for me i i feel like i was really fortunate so at saint andrew high there was no dance group or dance club when i was there and i remember <laughs> with my rambunctious self going to the principal and saying to her that there is this club that club this club that club but no space for people who are artists and there's no outlet for people who Good. express themselves as artists and she was just like well what do you propose and i said there should be a dance group there should be a drama this there should be a Good. and she was like well head it up and come back to me well you know i did that i started the dance troupe there Good. i went back to her and i was like we have a dance troupe we have x amount of members i have access to costumes if you ever need anything because at that time jamaica school of dance i could tap into mm -hmm. my research Resources there because I was a. You wanted? Did you enter anything there. in JCDC? In prep school, I did. In high school, no, because that space never existed until I literally was in fifth form, and I was just like, I went go my whole high school life and do one dance in my school. This so make no sense. Lisa, I kid you not. <laughs> From I said that to Mrs. Reed, we perform graduation, we perform prize giving, we perform. Um, what do you call it? Whatever um, service in the morning. <laughs> she was just like, dance. Wendy Phillips, report to the office. You and you dance, dance. But it felt so good to mm -hmm. have a principal who listened, yeah. who gave, who allowed me room. Yeah, Mrs. Reed was like to, that. But Mrs. she was also Reed disciplined. Was, but she was disciplined. Yeah. And that's the thing. We associate artists with being free for all and free spirited. And yes, there's a freedom of expression. But everything in the but world is art now. <sighs> Everything. What is the world without art? But everything is art. Yeah. The, by virtue of you looking at your new phones, the cars, you need artists. Absolutely. In, it's in all the realm. design based. It's all design based. It's all creative based. So everything is so beautiful on, on social media. Yeah. You know, and the curation of some people's sites and yeah. websites. And, and everything is visual. So I, w I would say in raising your children and. Um, those of you know who are you know have children who are still in prep school or primary school it's 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 allowing them to be children too right. and giving them the space to just idealize about life mm -hmm. and inculcating self-discipline yeah. it's it's one thing to give them all this freedom but let them know that the world is not designed to be participatory right. it's designed to be goal oriented right. so You'll get the certificate for participation in prep and prep school and primary school, but when it comes to the real world, unless you're not getting a tag for fifth place, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. It's not. You're not going to get A for effort. You're right. going to get A for deliverable. That's right. So if you don't deliver, you're not. You're not going to get paid. Yeah. So that's that's. So you have to start. That's one thing I remember saying to to Alex. Look. You know you have to deliver yeah you love our culture and I that's do. not a that's not I a no thing no. that is a long time thing that's a long um, time something tell me a bit about your love for our music space but mm -hmm. also is our dance all reggae thing but it's a culture, culture. thing mm -hmm. i know that about you um when eco mouse came out with what of them it was my first 45 and then i started just collecting music so i'm a big music collector and then my first sting i had my sister my friend well they were older my sister is much older but so they snuck me out that time sting used to be held at the stadium <laughs> and the first thing i went to them buckle the stage <laughs> and, and yeah, this was this was least i must have been like 11 or 12 but i loved it i i'm and, sorry and did your mother know you were there no she didn't know i was and there and when she found out that you were there she didn't because my sister, when you have an older sister, it, it, no things man, are proper good. Proper coverage, head back and to And so my sister, <laughs> my sister is, a, is completely opposite to me. So she is a party animal and she's, to this day, my yeah. sister is a party animal. So she'll come to Jamaica and you don't see her and she can't get me to go out. Right. But she would, I remember my first time going into Epiphany. I must have been like 13. Oh my. And my <laughs> sister would sneak me into places. So I got an understanding of, of the and culture. I, because I loved music. Yeah. 
But I wasn't, uh, I never, I didn't drink, I never smoked. I wasn't one of these young people. I never needed artificial stimulants for ecstasy. I still don't. Oh, a word. So I, I never I, needed artificial stimulants no, for ecstasy. No, and I still don't. I can Ooh. get very high on myself. So I didn't need, so music for me and going to the dance hall and so I, from high school, I knew Bujo and Beanie and, and all, right. all of those different. So stuff. here is what we're going to do, right? <laughs> I am going to, this is my favorite part of doing this. Because right. no one knows that something is happening or right. coming, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I am going to play something for you. Okay. And you have to choose whether you want to tell me who the artist is mm -hmm. and the title oh, or dear. sing the next line. Okay. Just don't go into like, I can tell you who not to go, like, don't go into, go ahead. <laughs> All right, ready? Okay, hold on. I'm not very good with this game, but okay. Really? Mm -mm. You might surprise yourself. Okay. You do this with everybody. Just my mic so I can hear. Will you see if this really me have a part? You know what, made it. Jungle, 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 jungle. <laughs> That's right, I okay. actually do. <laughs> and when people least expect it, all right, hold on. Zongo zong, zongo zongo zing. And, uh, jump for happiness and jump for joy. Hey. You know, for car, yellow man, no boy. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you like to dance? I do. Do mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Big dance. I never knew that part. Mm -hmm. Actually, like one time I did see you do a little, um, you yeah, know, you want to video there. My true, true. All right. I'm going to play this one. This one you have to give me. Okay. Um, the next line, okay? Okay. Enough girl and I don't bongo. All right, that's the title. I'm going to pause it and you have to give me the next line. Mm -hmm. Girl from Rima, girl from jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Enough girl and girl in a bungle. Girl from Rima, girl from jungle, lad. Mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> Yo, you're really not joking. Who's your favorite artist? Um, in terms of dance or reggae? Yeah. Bujo. Bujo Banta. What do you like about Bujo? Um, his, his range, his... Him can go from water man to... Shiloh to trust no he can his lyrics are deep informative and he stays relevant he's always ahead of the curve and I, I respect that about him and he's been you know would you come in from fur <laughs> from stamina daddy right now to trust and to a new album is you have, you have to get a boy you have to give him props Pro absolutely do. props and so buju um i love my morgan heritage jesse royals protege you know chronics i i love that whole generation coming up i love all of my old time dance all artists them I love my sham spice. I could, I just, you know, you have they're different, they're different moments for different people. And then I'm, you know, Brothers Johnson, Quincy Jones. I listen to a lot of Miles Davis. I listen to a lot of um, Kassav and T. Vice. I listen to a lot of music and I've been collecting music, you know, fellow Kuti from I was a child. So if you ask people about Afrobeats, no, they have no idea who fellow Kuti was. But Fellow Kuti is, is really is a person who started that whole movement and brought this is Nigerian all news music. For me. I'm learning to, something to the world. here. Yeah. So Afrobeats now is new, but yeah. if you really are a connoisseur of deep African music, you have to go and buy and know who Fellow Kuti was. I'm about to look that mm -hmm. up. If you know anything about me, I'm yeah. totally going no, to go should, and look that should. up. So I could, if you look, I have thousands of albums. LPs, CDs, cassette tape. I used, to, I used to build cassette tape for people. Yeah, and when the, with boss saying you have to reel it with your pencil. Yeah, for yeah, those so slice with it. And if you did like a boy, you build a tape for him. Oh. Like oh, oh side A or, has what, then, side B has what. And then, or if he liked you, he would give you music on a cassette and you have to rewind and 
start again. I, it's not, everything is just so easy now. Even in your car, you can just use your finger and scroll to where you want to and, and stuff. Or when a CD player did come out, I have to find a way to buy the, the jack for push it in and the ashtray <laughs> for play. Oh my gosh, Things I remember that. No, the cassette had to go in it. and a cord came out mm -hmm. and then there was a jack that you had to put into your disc mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. or something like that, not mm -hmm. true? And yep. you play the music. Oh my Things gosh. Really no, my daughter will look at a CD and be like, what's, what's that? that? Is that a coaster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say a word mm -hmm. and I want you to give me the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, food. Practical. Alexander. Unconditional love. Hmm. Southeast Saint Anne. Solace. Miss World. Glamorous. Lisa. Stoic. What's the one thing that people would least expect about Lisa? but is a mm. massive part of who she is. <laughs> I guess how domesticated I am. <laughs> I, I, there's so many layers to me. I, I mean, every time somebody sees Honestly. me pick up a, a broom and start sweep, they're like, you do this? Yeah, I'm a, I'm, um, if you speak to Alex and Richard, they'll tell you that she is a clean freak. Iron your sheets on the bed iron your sheets wow. um, <laughs> type of person but I don't I think what would surprise people most is how I guess gentle I am I'm a gentle soul and I can go from zero to 300 in a second but I come right right back but the heart of who I am is extremely gentle I think people see me and think that she's so intimidating but I'm I'm not far from it you're not but I do feel like if you don't come to you correct you're going to be made to feel <laughs> this big <laughs> yo I can't, it's the look it's the it's, like uh well, come prepared. <laughs> come prepared. It, it's 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 come prepared. Um, know yourself yeah. before know you yourself step into this before space. You, before you step <laughs> into a particular thing, and I'm. If you are, I'm brutally honest. Yeah. So if we're working on something together, if if you have to understand that, what I'm saying to you is not personal, but if you and take responsibility for it, but I'm brutally honest. And so if you can't manage that, then you can't hunt in the same pack with me. It, oh, easy you know. lioness. No, you, you just can't. You, if, you're, if you're easily, um, if you're too sensitive, yeah. you can't hang out with me. It, it's, 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 it's not gonna work. <laughs> when this whole thing is said and done, what do you want to be remembered for and known for? I actually don't want, I actually don't want a funeral. Really? I don't want, no. I actually have a lignum vitae tree that I've planted at home and I've told Alex and Richard that if I, if I go before them, just burn me and throw me on it. I don't want anybody to be, and you can put my name on it. I don't want to be remembered. I don't want to, um, I don't want anybody speaking over my name. Hmm. It's, it's, do you feel like your that's work should one, have spoken for itself? Yes, I think your work speaks for mm -hmm. itself. And I think that's perhaps one thing that people don't realize. If Once you start, I actually don't like the limelight. So if you even come to my constituency, I drive myself, there are no entourages, there's, and I push people forward. So, no, when I'm gone, I'm gone. I, you, can remember the, you can remember me if you want to talk about me, but... I don't know that I want to be eulogized in any way at all. Do you feel like your aim is to leave whatever you have, leave your cards mm -hmm. on the table while you're here? Yeah, you should, you should see my... I'm not trying to call your bluff. Yeah. You should see who I am yeah. from, from long time, from coming from afar. And the legacy really are the lives that you touch. So if you can make somebody's life better 
and certainly your children, your children should come out better than you and leave something there. Sure. I'm just here for a moment. For sure. So I'm, my work is not for, I'm not doing it to, to get anything from it other than, than leaving the place better than I found it. So if that happens, then I'm, I'm good. I don't, I don't want anything else. I'm happy. <laughs> nice. I like that. Thank you. You're welcome. A lot. You're welcome.